Hello, my name is Vignesh, and this is going to be lecture number six in the math lecture series. So today we'll be going over manipulating and solving equations. Basically, the main thing you know about this topic is that there's multiple ways to manipulate or solve an equation, like and such as factoring, and combining like terms, but unlike all the ones I listed here in the notes, which again are all found on Google Classroom, so you can go over the notes as well as hopefully do all the practice problems at the very end and check your answers with the answer key. But yeah, so basically the, today's topic is manipulating solving equations, and we're, we're, I'm just gonna go over each like each method. And usually when when you have questions like this, you may have to use multiple of these methods, so you should always have tried to uh, memorize all the methods you can use to solve an equation, so you can solve it efficiently, and you don't have to spend too much time on each question. So first off, we have factoring. So here you're factoring a quadratic equation in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. So when, when you're factoring this equation, what you first wanna do is you wanna factor into x plus h times x plus k. And here b is the sum of h and k and c is the product of h and k. So for example, we have x squared plus four x plus four. Here, here we factor into x plus two times x plus two. How we can do that? It's because two plus two equals four, so that's the b value. And two times two equals four, which is the c value. So yeah, that's how you that's how you did that one. Next, we have combined like terms, and oh yeah, and factoring and combined like terms are two things we also went over in the last video. So you may see, find some commonality commonality here. So combined like terms is also very simple. You have two expressions that you're adding here, or you can subtract as well, and you're trying to combine them. So I'm trying to combine six x squared and five x squared first because they have the same variable as well as the same exponents for that variable. So six six times plus five is eleven, so that's eleven x squared. Now five x and six x for the same reasons. And that's going to give us 11x. So that's this is the resulting expression. So I get this long equation. I, I can like simplify this equation like that. Also, we have cross multiplying. So if we have two fractions, like we have 4 over 5 and x over 10 here. So what I can do is I can do 4 times 10, which is 40, is equal to 5 times x. So basically, I'm, I'm multiplying the diagonals. So 5x is equal to 4 times 10, which is 40. And now x is equal to 8. That's how I solve for that. That's how I could solve for x that way. Next, we have square rooting. So let's say I have x plus 2 squared, squared the whole equation, expression equals 4. In that case, I square root both sides. So x plus 2 equals square root of 4. And square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. Make sure it's not just plus 2. So I have x plus 2 equals plus or minus 2. x is equal to 0 or 4 because it's, it's two, 2 minus 2 or it's, two, it's negative 2 minus 2. <coughs> oh, wait, sorry. Here it's negative 4, not it's positive four. That's a mistake right there. Yes, it's it's zero comma negative four because you if it's if it's x plus two is equal to positive two, you have x is equal to zero. Or if it's x plus two is equal to negative two, you have x is equal to negative four. So yeah, sorry, that's an that was supposed to be a negative sign. That didn't get cut up for some reason. So yeah, so it's x equal to zero or, or negative four. And sometimes they may say make sure x is greater than or equal to zero. So in that case, you, it would just be zero, but sometimes they can ask what are the multiple solutions. And in that case, you put zero and it can just be zero and negative four. Okay, variable substitution. That's the other one. So basically in this case, we have, we have x plus two squared minus four times x plus two plus four equals zero. Here you may, you, you can obviously just like, Expand that is expand that expression and exp and then use distribution problem there and you can combine like terms and do all that jazz or to make it even simpler you can let z equals x plus two and you so not so you write it as z squared minus four z plus four equals zero so now you have z minus two squared equals zero z and then and then if you what and if you do the math to make sure that z minus two equals zero it would zero have to equal two so z equals two and then and then and then now we we put now we plug back in x plus two for z, and then that gives us x plus two equals two, and x is obviously equal to zero in that case. So yeah, now we have a couple more additional strategies. What a couple one one of the additional strategies is you're equating the coefficients. So in this case, like an example, we have a x squared plus b x equals seven equals five x squared plus six x equals seven. So in that case, we know a has to equal to five and b has to equal to six in order for the two expression quadratics to equal the same. So obviously it'll be, you find more complicated versions of this, but I'm just giving like the simple version to give you an example. Now even another strategy that, in, that involves multiplying both sides of an equation by number in order to remove fractions. So let's say I had um, x over two, or x over three plus x over two is equal to 10. 
In this case, what I want to do is I want to multiply both sides of the equation by six. So what that does is it, it removes the three, so that gives me two x, and removes the, the denominator of two, so that gives me three x and equals sixty. So this is this is a far easier way to solve rather than just making making the two fractions have the same denominator and adding them and then do all that jazz. In this case, it's just easier to remove the fractions and it's just easier to solve that way. Yeah, and another and, and obviously like we like I said before, and you, you may have seen the practice test, sometimes the easiest way can just be you like it'll give you an equation, it'll ask you to solve. It can just be plugging in the answer choices into the equation and solving it that way. So worst case scenario if you're stuck or if it's like a really complicated problem, you can just substitute in the answer choices and you'll get the right answer that way too. So now we have some practice problems, obviously. I I, I actually put a bunch of practice problems behind. I was gonna go with like two, three or four questions, They're like two of each, like two of each top, like chapter. So this way that you guys can do the rest, hopefully at home and the answers are at the very end. And if you get any help with the answers, you can ask any of us. And hopefully if you need more, and for more practice, you can go online and look and search up questions like, for like solving equations, SAT, and you'll find a bunch of them online. So the first one that I wanted to go over Um, which one was it? Yeah, so the first question I'm gonna go over is number 16. If eight plus five X is twice, is twice X minus five, what is the value of X? So in this case, it would just be eight plus five X is equal to two X minus 10. That's twice five X minus five. So I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this one because this is some of you get word problems like this, so you should know how to do it. And I would subtract two X on both sides. I subtract eight from both sides. That gives me three X is equal to negative 18. X is equal to negative six. So answer choice A. And if I looked at the very end, there's a lot, obviously, like I said, there's a lot here. 16 is equal to A. The other one I wanted to go to, go to is number 19. If three times x minus two y minus three z equals zero, which is the following expresses x in terms of y and z. Here they want me to isolate a variable. So like they want me to write the equation in terms of y and z. So what I, I, want, so what I want to do here is I want to make all the x variables on one side and make and like make sure it's just x, x is just x is on one side and the, and the, and the rest is the, like the rest of the equation on the other side. So let me show you this. So what I first want to do is I, I would, let me remove this one so you guys can see it better. So what I first want to do is I want to distribute this three to get three x minus six y minus three z equals zero. And now I want to move this y and the z over to the other side. Three x is equal to six y plus three z. Now I'm dividing both sides by three. X is equal to two y plus z. That gives me answer choice B. So yeah, so that's also very simple. Okay, now the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the second, the last question I want to go with is number nine. X cubed plus KX squared minus three times X minus two is equal to X times four, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to think what, what, where can I isolate the K? So like, so th this is this is the strategy I said earlier where you, where you had to make the coefficients the same. So I want to find, I want to multiply KX squared times one of these where it's, so let me show you what I mean by that. So here, I, I, I think I look at x negative 18x squared. I see that kx squared is here too, right? So I, and using, if you, if you knew how to use FOIL, you know you have to multiply this times negative two in order to get this number. So that means negative two times k x squared is equal to negative 18x squared. That means negative 18 is equal to negative two times k. That means k is equal to nine. So here, it's, I, obviously, I could just distribute this whole e equation, and then just I, I would just have a long equation here. But I find that what you what it would be easier to do is just use your brain. Like obviously, if you, if you don't know what which like which no, like which term you could use to better like equate it to make sure you can find the right coefficient. Uh, sometimes you, you just don't know, so you'd have to you can just using FOIL you could just like 
write out the whole equation. Ex you can expand the whole e ex expression. However, in this case, I, I recognize that kx squared times negative two is the only way I can get an x squared term, which means that these two multiplied have to equal negative 18 x squared. That's how I just simplified it for myself and got k equals nine, which equals d. The, the, the final one I want to go over is number 12. This is if x is greater than one, where is the solution to the equation above? So I have the solution. So I have this equation, sorry. So first what I want to do is I want to like give, uh, also I recognize here that x minus one times x plus one is equal to x squared minus one. That's very important later on. So first off, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply four times x plus one. I'm going to multiply. So if I have four times x minus one, I want to multiply this by x plus one over x plus one plus two over x plus one. I want to multiply this by x minus one over x minus one. This gives me four x plus one over x minus one times x plus one is equal to two x minus two, sorry, plus, not equal to, it plus two x minus two over x plus one times x minus one. And if you use like a common factoring rule, you know x plus one times x minus one is the same as x squared minus one squared, which is x squared minus one. So what I do, what I can do, and and I can add these because the denominators are the same. So that gives me six x. So this is four x plus four. My bad. So this gives me six x plus two over x squared minus one is equal to thirty five over x squared minus one. Now since the denominators are the same here, I can I can just make this six x plus two is equal to thirty five. And now this is just common algebra. Six x is equal to thirty three x is equal to 33 over 6. And I, I could just leave it like this, but if I wanted to simplify it, I could just do, sorry about that, x is equal to 11 over 3. Sorry, 11 over 2, my bad. And if I if I wanted to check my answer, I could go at the very end. I could probably go 11 over 2. So yeah, so I hope this gives you a taste of solving and manipulating equ equations. Obviously, please try to do all of the equations, um, all, the num all, the, all of the questions here. There's a bunch here that'll give you a lot of good practice and it'll, it'll give you a lot of common questions SAT may ask. And obviously, good luck on your SAT journey.